Good morning. Uh, my, name is, my name is Herman, Herman Gutierrez. I work for Booking.com. Uh, uh, this, this is me trying to put in a page over 25 years of experience. So if you really want to know better about me, just look for me in Ligring. Just, this is more a lot of things. But it's what I do nowadays on, on Booking is working on KVMs and also on virtualization. I work with the key, uh, team Carmen. Uh, of course, I don't work alone. So uh, also Nate, Maria, Giordano, Lily, and Omar are involved so to some degree or fully uh, into this project. Also, I want to uh, give a special thanks to Mariano. He's no longer with our team, but he was the one who was there already working on KVMs uh, uh, when I got into the company. So he. He, took, uh, he decided to implement Open Nebula. Uh, he's no longer working with our team, but he's still working on, on booking. Uh, so what's this about? So we are going to talk about our uh, pains that we had uh, implemented Open Nebula. It's not about Open Nebula limitations, but more about what we didn't, go, didn't do quite good. It's, so it's not about getting into details or getting, uh, this is a limitation of open or not. It's more about what we decide and we could do better instead of what we did. So we are kind of big. We have over 1,000 hosts. We have uh, over uh, 13 uh, KVMs running on with uh, 2,000 users, which are developers. And we're still counting. I think those numbers are really old. So in short, I joined the company in 2016 uh, uh, of a team of two. So it was only Mariano there working on the KVM. Um, so in 2018, on, on October, we started to play with Open Nebula and Hackathon Day. And we made a proof of concept. We can make Open Nebula work in our infrastructure. So in 2016, the project took really off and started to implement it and slowly made it to it and learning in the process. Uh, this year was the final move. We just dropped all, all KVM implementation and just were fully based on uh, Open Nebula. I want to talk about our use case. It's, um, it's our developer environment. It's not in production. It's not a QA. It's not nothing like that. Our users are uh, developers. Uh, we have many templates. We have over 150 templates. Uh, there, those are roles for us. Uh, we are user-oriented. The user owns the VM, dispose the VM, or whatever we want to do with the VM. But we have also owners of the templates of the roles. We are not the owners of them. People need to take care of them. But it's, that's a working process for us. Uh, we, our mission is just to provide infrastructure, so we need only just do that. So I want to show how, how it was. It's like a Ruth Goldberg machine. Uh, we, we had a mix of different uh, scripting languages like Perl, Python, and Bash. We had also the same as Open Nebula, a master server, which just uh, deploys the, the VMs and the host where the VMs runs. Every host has its lo local storage, so it means when you deploy the VM, you needed to wait to the VM to be copied to the local storage and run there. When you VM, when if the host is down, your VM is lost. That's the cost of it. Also, we have network limitations. We the, the VMs only work on the same network as the host. So when you wanted to move a VM around different hosts, you just needed to pick the same rack. Uh, so if the rack is down, so just you're lost. Um, also, we were in the soups of truth. I mean, we are hacked into the, our uh, physical inventory software to make a PR VMs there. So we were lying, saying, OK, this is server, and that, that's the way we integrate our VM infrastructure there. So that's not a good thing. But also, it was an external, an external application that we depended on. So we, if that, that application failed, all infrastructure was just impossible to run in terms of we, we cannot have a new VM if that was down. 
Also, the schedule, as, in, as you know it on Open Nebula, it was a crunchable. So it was one in every minute we had pick up the queue and create the new VMs for the users. How it is? Yeah, it's still a Rube Goldberg thing. I think uh, if you want to implement an Open Nebula or, or whatever uh, VM management software you want, you're going to have a lot of moving parts. You have to deal with complexity. If you have something that's really flexible, you need to cope with how complex it's going to be. So the networking, we moved into OpenMV switch. So we have VLAN tagging, so we can move any VM across our data centers. Uh, the storage is on NFS, so the VMs now live in the NFS storage on NetApp. We have, uh, as in terms of uh, Open Nebula images, that's the, ima the, the, the golden image per VM, so we have as many images as roles we have. We have 150 images and we renew the images. So we, every week we create new images and SSH with it in place, so make the numbers. Uh, we made a tooling to cope with, to manage Open Nebula, so we wrote it in Python. I want to talk about that later. We also are the source of truth now. We are, have a service to expose to different uh, different services inside, like uh, Puppet or different uh, uh, firewall services we have. So, okay, this role needs to access this service, so they can have the firewall host to get there. Uh, we are the system tool for that. So we integrate with the rest of the company, having a web service is the written uh, in-house to just to cope with that. So we're working with no issues. Well, uh, mm, uh, mostly nothing, but we made a lot of mistakes in the, in the road, so it's, that's why. I had this slide, and I was to put that the thing that worked with no issues was networking. But uh, last month, uh, we had issues. So uh, we made a big network uh, with VLAN tangling, with multiple VLANs, yes. But we had uh, 16, 16 or 15K VMs running. So one, uh, around 10% of them just got stuck because we got a uh, file system full on the NFS. That's another thing to talk about. Uh, that, brought down the entire network. We make a cascade of our RP requests. Uh, the top of the rack switches started to get crazy, and well, we had an incident because of that. So, let's learn. Well, we need to uh, partition. We need to be aware of where the hosts are to define the networks we want to. So, the just wanting to have a VM moving around for the whole data center is something that is nice to have, but it's not realistic. You need to just to make clusters to just to, to just partition the network and not having that kind of uh, ARP cascading with a whole memory consuming VLAN tagging all over the top of the racks. So that's the first lesson we learned. Um, we became the source of truth, yeah, because our API was slow. It was slow in terms of, okay, we need this VM this VM, we, want, we look for the VM per DNS host. So the name of the VM is DNS, the fully qualified domain name. So if you ask in, uh, this amount of VMs having an open nebula, the open nebula takes 50 seconds to one minute. So taking per request, that amount of time is not something we wanted. So we have cache and we have the sort of through the Python server we had started caching things. Uh, of course, tuning uh, Open 1D help. I mean, of a, we made it run faster, but we also needed to deal with cache. Cache is also is a way of lying. You don't have the truth. You just have a cache. So we, you need to also know that you are not really uh, truthful. So also we need to be really sure that we use just update the record on the Open Nebula database. You just expose it. So first thing, yeah, fully qualified name as ID is not a good idea, at least from our point of view. Um, it's something we didn't figure out. We thought of the first test, of course, if you had 200 VMs, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not an issue because you have the VM information right away, so, but 
when you start having thousands of them, you can really start to wait. Uh, so our web interface, the user facing where you provision the VM and that kind of things that is also in house, it, it just talks, requests the VM by name and that's not a good thing. You could do better just asking for the ID and not dealing with the whole mess of having to cache everything. Uh, going back to this, uh, but Puppet or other services look for the fully defined name. So the, um, as I shared last night with some other colleagues here, uh, having that cache and the Python uh, middleware help us to cope with the, the limitation of looking for this and waiting for OpenAble to do that for us. Well, the tooling. Well, we took Python. Back in the moment, it was a pretty good idea. We had the OCA. Uh, back in the day, it was uh, OpenAble up 4. The, the, the buildings were pretty good, and maintained, but by the moment, but the last commit was in 2017. And we are already in OpenAble up 5. So uh, we cannot maintain that Python buildings. And so the lesson we learn is don't pick a language that your upstream doesn't support. That means if you do a tooling, it's worth learning the language, something we, okay, we don't know Ruby, so we, why we should bother? Which we know Python and writing Python, right? But okay, if OpenAble had a, inside the project, open, uh, all the Python bindings, it would be great, but they don't have it. I think they're applying to, but that's another thing. So the lesson we learn is uh, you need uh, to write your tooling around the, something that is supported upstream. It's, it's no, no good idea just to do this way. Okay, this is also one of the most impactful things. Um, we have, as I said, all the, the VMs live in the NFS shirt. Uh, when you have 100, it's okay. But when, when you start to have, let me think of it, I think we were around 2,000 VMs. We started to have, uh, different issues. We, f uh, we have everything in one volume, that is one data storage in terms of OpenAble. We fear that we have, okay, we, it's, it's 100 terabytes enough to, uh, to get all the VMs we want to run there? Yes, so okay, let's put everything there. But then we have not that, but the IO was starting to really have an issue. So that also is the way the NetApp server works. If you have only one volume, you only have one core taking care of that volume. Even if that network server has 16 cores, it only had done one core to that. So first thing, we say, okay, our use case helped in that regard. We got into every VM and figured out that it was a cron job making a git pool every five minutes uh, and make it a CHO recursively in that uh, re repo. That made a whole IO request, so that thing was okay, let's fine tune that thing and just get the fire off. That helped a lot, give us a lot of, uh, of time to work on something to solve the issue. So the issue is, okay, throw money at it. We needed to create, to put a new NetApp server uh, may be more clever about creating new data stores. So we were really aware of we need to create 16 data stores per node. So then we said, okay, so we have multi volumes. If you, nowadays, you look at the amount of uh, any node we have on OpenAble, it's paginating. Uh, so, yes, that's the, the way we solve it. We, needed to add more money to it because the, the NetApp server was already over one and we cannot just move away from it. So lesson learned, uh, first think an IO. Space won't be an issue, but uh, the, the, of course the, 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 that consume is something that we didn't foresee. Okay, why we are, where we are, we are still caching. Bone is, be, is booking up a Nebula service, that's the way we're calling it, so like a pun intended. Um, it's, uh, as a team, we're still the man in the middle. We, uh, 
we uh, are working on self-service page to people fix their puppet issues or their things they are having and without just manually trying to uh, reach, reaching us to solve it. Uh, the same thing with their uh, role template owners. We need we need to make the tooling to their the, to let the role owners work with the templates without uh, our help. Uh, we have a nowadays we have a mashup with a something that looks like the Open Nebula abstraction in booking and the self service code. Everything is together. We need to split that off. Yes, the NFS service is gone, but it's expensive. It's, if we grow up, we need to buy new NetApp storage, and the NetApp, we all know that it's not cheap. Uh, work, uh, work in progress, I'm, I'm rewriting some parts of the CLI in Ruby, because the bindings are way better, are maintained by the, by the Open Nebula team, and also the CLI of Open Nebula is, uh, is written in, in Ruby. So it's, if you need a, an example of how they do that, you just look at the code and just not copy paste, but get it really resembles there. Uh, something we don't know is how to deal with retries. It's, uh, I have a couple of ideas, but uh, when a hook of an Open Nebula fails, Open Nebula just goes ahead. Uh, well, sometimes you need to insert a DNS entry into, the, into your DNS to, okay, this host resolves to this, and the hook of the Nebula fails, you don't know. You may see the logs, but there's no way to retry it. So the hook itself needs to add the, that retry logic and at least put it in the queue and say, okay, I tried this, I couldn't do it, so I'm putting it back in the queue. I, some other process is going to pick it up and retry for it. Um, networking, we are starting to, because of the issue we have, we're starting to think about moving to a different technologies uh, in, in terms of networking to eVPN to have the same VLAN tagging all over the, the data center. But the networking is not as plugable as, uh, for example, the transfer uh, plugins or the other drivers you have on Open Nebula. It's something I liked about the Open Nebula implementation is that we created a um, uh, we, uh, I created a modify the share uh, driver to make it a NetApp driver so they can talk with a NetApp server and, for example, clone an image uh, using a NetApp clone. So there's something that takes uh, 10, 15 minutes to CP a file with a, to create a disk of the VM. You just uh, have a subsequent operation for that. That's something in our use case, it makes a lot of sense because our users are developers, and developers want to have the VM fast. Um, we also have a waste of resources. That means the VM creates the, the user creates the VM, but okay, once they're done with their work, we uh, they, they don't destroy it. So they we have my estimate was. A 60% of the, the VMs, in the fact, because of the network incident, uh, have powering off the whole, v the whole VMs, the whole DC. Uh, we have over 50% of VMs back up running, so we have, I have a pretty good idea, we have 40 to 45% of the VMs that shouldn't be running, and the user won't take care of it. So, yes, we need to take a, they put a place a policy that just removes the, uh, the VM or just your VM is going to live for this long. So if you want to have to keep your work, just git push, create a new VM, and git pull. Uh, we can, uh, uh, right now, we cannot do that because it's just it's going to add a lot of work. So that's when self-service and everything comes into play. So OK, that's it.